I was interested in looking at the rates of compassion fatigue and burnout in those who work in long-term care. If you haven't watched before, my name is Dr. Nicole Diddick. I'm a geriatrician and I've been looking after older adults and their families for about 20 years. So let me take a step back and define burnout for a moment. Because burnout is one of the elements of compassion fatigue, but it's a separate entity. It involves a chronic strain and it's often uh, a result of or can result in a mismatch between the worker and the work environment. Burnout is usually thought of as having three elements to it as well. And this includes emotional exhaustion. Another aspect is depersonalization. And then a third element is lack of sense of personal accomplishment. So somebody is more likely to think that they're just not being effective and their work is not measuring up to where it should be. Why should we care about burnout and compassion fatigue? Well, it can have an effect on the providers themselves. It can lead to people missing work or maybe leaving the profession altogether. And I've certainly heard stories about that during the COVID pandemic um, in terms of people working in long-term care. And then of course, it can have an effect on patients. So if you have a provider who's burnt out or is emotionally exhausted and has compassion fatigue, they're naturally going to be less caring. And that could translate into getting not as good care. It'll certainly be hard to build a therapeutic relationship in that scenario. I came across some data about compassion fatigue and burnout in long-term care. I read a meta-analysis of about 14 studies looking at long-term care homes, some of them in Canada and others in the US, uh, parts of Europe and Asia. Interestingly, they found that the size of the home um, doesn't really matter, although medium-sized homes seem to be a little bit more likely to have people with burnout. They also found that um, private homes versus public, public pay homes didn't really make that much of a difference. But things that were protective against burnout were if somebody felt as though the care they were providing was person-centered. So if a healthcare provider felt as though they could provide care that was in line with the person's uh, wishes and that was meaningful to the person, then they're less likely to experience burnout. Another protective factor was if the work was more complex and challenging. So even though that type of job might be harder, the person doing it is less likely to have burnout, maybe because that job is more stimulating or interesting. Risk factors for experiencing burnout included female gender, being less experienced. And another thing I found really interesting, especially as I'm thinking about ageism and the perception of some of the conditions that many older adults are living with, especially in long-term care, is that people who had negative attitudes toward older adults in general were more likely to be burnt out. So if they felt as though um, old people were useless or um, that somebody who's living with Alzheimer's uh, couldn't communicate and was just gonna get worse and nothing was gonna help, those people tended to be more burned out. And that's interesting to learn because it means that if somebody can learn more about older adults and about Alzheimer's, it might make them less likely to have burnout. They found that people who um, had a better understanding of Alzheimer's and the nature of the disease, that sometimes behaviors are cyclical and they don't last forever, um, people who had an understanding of that and also were able to provide person-centered care were less likely to be burnt out and were able to keep going and providing that compassionate care. Another interesting concept that I wasn't really familiar with was emotional role dissonance. Now, we've all experienced this. So this is when you have one emotion on the inside, but you have to portray something else on the outside. So an example could be feeling very frustrated and angry, but needing to maintain a cheerful veneer. And that can be a big challenge in long-term care, working with uh, older adults, some of whom are experiencing dementia, and may uh, require you to go into their reality uh, which we've talked about before in these videos and going into that reality can be very uh, dissonant from what you understand as reality. So that can be frustrating to have to manage that and kind of maintain a professional composure. So what can we do to fight compassion fatigue and burnout? Well that's a topic for another video 
but I would say that it probably goes beyond just having a yoga class or having um, being told to just find a way to be more resilient. Working in healthcare and maybe especially working in geriatrics and long-term care as an example uh, is very challenging and it does have a lot of risk factors for compassion fatigue and burnout. It can, these can often be unacknowledged. So a lot of times when we think about um, uh, healthcare workers burning out, we think it's because of the, the work is so fast paced and varied and we think about ICUs and trauma centers. But uh, those who work in different settings can be at risk for these conditions as well. So next time we'll talk a little bit more about strategies for avoiding burnout. If you'd like to learn more about aging and geriatrics, then you can go to my website, therinkle.ca, or you can watch the video that YouTube is suggesting right now.